This is part three of the Alex and Auto's minivan mashup. In this episode, we're going to be talking about seats and the interior in the Chrysler Pacifica, the Honda Odyssey, the Toyota Sienna, and the Kia Carnival. You'll note that some of the Kia Carnival inserts are a little bit off kilter here, I guess you'd say, and that's because it was filmed the week after I had the main three minivans. I was originally told the Carnival wouldn't appear, then it did, so I went ahead and inserted it because I think it is a really interesting option if you're looking for something that is minivan practical, but not necessarily quite minivan shaped. Kia is really trying hard to make it the un-minivan, and some people may like that, but it does take a little bit of a toll on interior practicality. All three of these minivans have driver's seats that have the same range of adjustment. So the seat bottom cushion adjusts for height and for tilt, and we have a four-way adjustable lumbar support with the two-position memory on the driver's door. At the moment, the Sienna is the only one that offers a powered tilt telescopic steering column. This is memory linked with the two-position driver memory. And the Pacifica is the only one to offer a power passenger seat with the same range of motion as the driver's seat. The seat bottom cushion adjusts for tilt, something that we don't find in the Odyssey. And we have a four-way adjustable lumbar support over here, something that we don't find in the Sienna. This is a feature that I really wish Honda would address in the Odyssey because for my body shape, I found the Odyssey's front seats to be a little bit more comfortable. However, if you're taller, you might want to take a look at the Pacifica or the Sienna because these both have more headroom up front. Moving over to the Kia Carnival, the seats again have a surprisingly similar range of motion to the other competitors here. We have a seat bottom cushion that adjusts for height and for tilt and four-way adjustable lumbar. Unfortunately, even the top end version does not have a passenger seat with the same range of motion. The seat bottom cushion does adjust for height and tilt, but no four-way lumbar. Between these three options, second row comfort is pretty similar. I might have accidentally said that this Sienna was the top end trim. I made a mistake there. This is the limited trim, not the platinum trim, so we don't have the Ottomans. That's a feature that you would find in the very top end version of the Sienna, and that would make the second row seats a bit more comfortable than the Odyssey that we're testing and the Pacifica. Now, the Pacifica that we're testing is the hybrid model, so it does not have the stow and go second row seats. That means that it has seats that are basically the same as the ones that we find in the Odyssey and Sienna as far as adjustability. So the seat back reclines in all three of these vehicles and it slides forward and backward. The exact mechanism changes from vehicle to vehicle. So we have a little lever right here on the side for the Sienna. The Sienna and the Odyssey have some tricks up their sleeve when it comes to the second row seats. The second row seats in the Sienna have a really accentuated slide. So I can actually slide this all the way back here where you can't see me. And if I stuck my feet out, my feet wouldn't necessarily be touching that front seat back unless I was pointing my toes. This has an extremely long slide. The downside to the long slide are these visible tracks. You'll notice that we don't have a rug that covers them. So even though we do have a little rubber section right here to try and cover that and keep some Cheerios out of there, you will notice that dirt and sand and other things will end up falling into those tracks over time. It will have to be cleaned out, otherwise it will limit the seat's motion. You should also know that the Sienna seats don't come out of the vehicle. That's because there's an airbag located in the seat because of this really eccentric seat track. They decided to put an airbag that follows the seat as it moves to improve passenger safety. Now the downside to that is that this is going to limit cargo capacity. If you're the kind of person that does like to go to Home Depot and pick up four by eight sheets of something, they will not fit in the Sienna because this collapses and scoots forward towards the back of that front seat. But that means that two feet of this interior is still gonna be occupied by these seats. They don't come out, they don't fold flat into the floor. That means that the longest item you could fit in here would be about six feet long because of this space being occupied by the seat. You will find a little bit more combined legroom in the Odyssey and Sienna, but that is mainly going to affect the third row passengers. Now, one interesting twist for the Odyssey is this center seat position right here, because again, this is the only top end trim to offer an eighth seat, but we still have the captain's chairs on the outboard side. So the center passenger will still have a little barrier between them and the outboard passenger. If that's something that you're interested in, it is worth noting that it is a little on the tight side if you put those two down. That really gives you an idea of how tight the center seat position might be. But most importantly, we have one and you can fold it, use it as an armrest or as a cup holder right there, or take it completely out of the vehicle. It just unlatches right like that. As with the Sienna, the second row seats slide forward and backward, but we don't have the same kind of motion that we find in the Sienna. But we have an additional trick up a sleeve. This goes side to side, right like that. So if you had a child seat in this captain's chair, they could be a little bit closer to the driver, right like that. Not quite in the business up front, but definitely a little bit more centric. And most importantly, it'd be a lot easier to get back there into the third row using this aisleway right here. If a child seat was in the chair, rather than having this in an outboard position, like so, and then going around the front. Unlike the Sienna, the Odyssey's second row seats come out of the vehicle, but there is a downside. They are 68 pounds, so that's about eight pounds heavier than the second row seats that we find in the Pacifica. 
And perhaps more importantly, because of the way the second row seats slide, this slide attachment mechanism stays in the vehicle. So you do not have a completely flat load floor if you take the second row seats out. You'll notice that we have the attachment points for that center seat position, the attachment points for the outboard seat position, and this is how that seat can slide side to side. Over here in the Pacifica, we find the only minivan with a large panoramic moonroof. There are actually three pieces of glass, one over the driver and front passenger's heads, a large one right back here over the second row, and then an additional one back there over the third row. Unlike the regular Pacifica, these seats come out of the vehicle rather than folding flat into the floor because the hybrid battery for the Pacifica Hybrid had to go somewhere, and that somewhere is right there where the seats would normally stow. The process is very similar to what we see in the Odyssey. You fold the seats, forward right like that, so that way they're a little bit more convenient to take out. But Chrysler offers us a helping hand. I have a button over here, so that way I can cause the front seat, either the driver or front passenger, to scoot forward. They didn't remove that particular button that's mainly there for the stow and go second row seats, but it really helps this process. And then we simply pull the webbing and then lift the seat completely out of the vehicle. But thanks to that seat being moved further forward, it's a little bit easier than it was in the Odyssey, unless you got out and moved that seat in advance. Then if you want to put the seat back in, let's see here, we simply align it up, drop it back into place. We can then hit the button, move that seat back to the same position that it was in before. On the pros and cons front, because these seats don't fold flat into the floor, they are more comfortable than the regular stow and go seats in the non-hybrid Pacifica, but they do not let you leave a child seat latched into place and still tilt and slide forward for easier third row access. You do have to go right here through the middle. Jumping into the Carnival, the seating sort of falls between worlds. This is available as a seven or an eight passenger minivan, but much like most of the competition, if you get the very top end trim, it's seven passenger only. However, you can get almost all the way there and still have eight passengers. The second row seat is made of three modules. So we have outboard modules that have a pretty extended slide to them. But interestingly enough, the middle seat goes even further back so far back that you have to fold the third row seats into the floor to get it all the way back. And it also goes pretty far forward. So if you wanna have a child seat latched into here and have that child a little bit closer to the parents up front, you could definitely do that. Or if you wanted to, for instance, have three people in the middle and have them not quite banging shoulders, you can push it a little bit further back. These seat modules come out of the vehicle. They also tilt and slide forward. So you can tilt them in this fashion right there, slide forward to get into the third row a little bit more easily, but they do not have a mode where you can keep a child seat latched into place and still do that. You could just slide them forward, but then we don't have quite as much room there to get back into the third row. In a move that's a little bit different than the Sedona that the Carnival replaces, the second row seats are removable from the vehicle, as you can see right there, as long as you don't get the absolute top end trim, in which case they are fixed into place. These seats are a little bit lighter than the ones in the Odyssey at 67 pounds, but still seven pounds heavier than the ones in the Pacifica. And we have the same reason for that. There's a seat belt attached to the seat itself, not attached to the vehicle because of the way that these seats move backwards and forwards, but they're still removable. And when you remove them from the vehicle, the one odd thing I noticed with all of this sliding track arrangement is that the floor mats are actually these narrow strips, leaving a lot of area where things could fall into those tracks, but also an awful lot of area where you could accidentally end up moving these rugs around and then they're not quite as useful. If you get the top end trim of the Carnival, then we get some really interesting second row seats. These are partially powered and partially manual. So they go forward and backward and very much like we find in some of the competition, they also move side to side. So if I'm in this forward position where the door is not in the way, I can move outboard a little bit. There are heated and ventilated seat controls on the power door. I can just reach through there and click that even with the door open. And then the controls on this other side of the seat get more interesting because I have a ton of options here. I can uh, go for a pre-configured relaxation position. I'll actually uh, scoot the seat, I think, a little bit further forward so you can maybe see what's going on here. Um, but this has an incredibly reclined nature to it. And then an ottoman pops out of the front and it power slides forward and backward if you have longer legs like I do. Now, this seat is just about far enough from the driver's seat that I can relax without putting my shoes on the front seat, uh, but probably I'd wanna kick those off for the most relaxation possible. We have a dual pane moonroof here, but not a big tri-pane moonroof like we find in the Pacifica. So the third row, there's nothing back here for me to stare at when I'm getting my dental exam. Third row accommodations are pretty similar between these three minivans. We do find more headroom in the Sienna and the Pacifica than we find in the Odyssey. But again, a little bit more legroom in the Honda and the Toyota than we find in the Chrysler. Still with this second row seat all the way back in its tracks, I have about three inches of legroom left. So legroom is absolutely not a problem here. 
Headroom's also pretty generous. If I sit back here with my head against the headrest, I have about three quarters of an inch of headroom left. And the third row seat does have a recline function. I can pull that little bit of webbing back there, get a moderately comfortable recline, not as comfortable as the second row. Headroom becomes a little bit more limited, however, in this position and the center seat belt comes out of the ceiling. As I said before, getting into the third row of the Odyssey is pretty easy if you don't have the center seat in position. And from this angle, you can see one of the reasons that these seats are heavier than the ones that we find in the Pacifica. They have the seat belt and all of that mechanical connection going on in the seat rather than in the body of the vehicle. Now let's lean back and see how the headroom is. Uh, my head actually touches the ceiling, so I can't get back there to the headrest in that position. I can right here in the center. There's a little bit more headroom because this has more of a curved profile right there. And then if I scoot all the way over to this side of the vehicle, I will go ahead and lean that seat down so that way you can see what's going on here. Then my head is touching right back here, right by the opening. Legroom is definitely pretty generous back here. I have about three inches of legroom, so very similar to what we see in the Pacifica, even though the second row seats are all the way back, but headroom is definitely a bit more limited. Also worth noting, the Odyssey is a little bit narrower back here in the third row than in either the Sienna or the Pacifica. It's about three quarters of an inch difference between these three vehicles. It's not a huge difference, but you may notice it if you were to try and combine adults and child seats back here. You might be wondering with the Sienna, how far do those second row seats really go back? As you can see, they go all the way back until they touch the third row. As with the Odyssey and Pacifica, the third row is a three passenger third row. I have a reasonable amount of headroom. If I put these headrests all the way up, my head does touch the opening of the rear. But if I sit in a more natural position, I have just about as much headroom as the Pacifica. The Pacifica is the only one where you can really hang out back here, put your head back on the headrest and just relax. Hopping into the third row is pretty easy with these tilt and slide second row seats. It's worth noting that you cannot leave a child seat latched into place in these seats and still tilt and slide them forward, however. The tracks on the outboard seats go further forward than the middle seat, so you can slide them forward if you have a child seat in place and still sort of eke your way through this side gap here, but adults might have a little bit of a problem with that. But as you can see, there's a lot of room back here. I can put my head back against the headrest. My head is touching the ceiling. We don't have quite as much headroom as we find in the Pacifica, but if I sit in a more natural position, then I have about an inch of headroom left. It just has to do with the way that this rear seat head area is shaped. An interesting touch with the Sienna is that we have four zone automatic climate control, not three zone automatic climate. The controls are right here in the ceiling for the two rear zones, that's left and right. And then you can see we have the single screen rear seat entertainment system. The Chrysler is the only one of these three that gives us two screens, individual ones for the second row passengers. The downside to this, of course, is that the third row passengers can't really see these screens with the second row passengers in the way. This is also the only system that doesn't just give us the ability to watch DVDs or an HDMI input. We also have some integrated Uconnect apps in this system. You can see that we mainly have games here. Rear seat passengers have the option of playing against the computer or playing against the person in the other seat. For instance, if I wanted to play checkers, I can go ahead and do that right here. And then the person in the seat next to me can play the red side. Kia's rear seat entertainment system is definitely more modern than the one that we find in the Sienna and the Odyssey. This doesn't have a DVD player, so if you want to play DVDs in your vehicle, you'll have to bring your own external player. There's an HDMI input on the side of each screen. But we do have two screens, one on each seat back, which is a little bit more like the Pacifica. So that means each person gets to watch what they want. We also have integrated Netflix, YouTube, you can screen share so you can watch the same thing on each screen. It does reduce the quality of the image for some strange reason. There's a news reader. This also doesn't require any sort of proprietary IR headphones technology, you can connect a Bluetooth headphone or you can connect a regular headphone. You can actually choose right there in this system. Because these rear seat devices seem to operate independently of the system up front, you can actually even pair the front system with the Bluetooth output of this and then listen to your movie over the speakers in the car. Now let's do a quick once round the interior of each of these. We have a pretty standard sized moonroof here in a Sienna, height adjustable shoulder belts for the driver and the front passenger. The Sienna has the newest interior of these threes, and I think it shows. We have a lot of different storage places going on in the front doors. We have a bottle holder down there at the bottom, some knickknack storage going on there. And then this enormous tray right across the dashboard where you could very easily store, you know, phones, a lot of knickknacks, things going on there, sunglass cases, etc. Uh, we have a small-ish infotainment system, I think, over here on the dashboard. Now, in truth, it's not that tiny, but we have this enormous bezel 
and I'm just really surprised that even the top-end versions of the Sienna don't get the big infotainment system that we find in the Toyota Highlander. I do think that's a bit of a misstep. Below that, we find the controls for the climate control system. You can control the front two zones and the rear two zones from this button bank here. Some folks have asked this, if it is important to you that the rear be locked out from the front, you cannot do that in the Sienna at the moment. We have a single USB input for that infotainment system right there, large cup holders right here, two large ones over there, and then two slightly smaller ones behind this door right here, electric parking brakes and drive mode selectors right there, and then again, that enormous storage area right there under the center console. This is really nice and thin, and that allows you to put some very large items down there. This is the flip and fold storage area that you saw before, one oddity is that the armrests on either side are not adjustable at all. They don't move forward or backward or up and down. Some people might find them a little bit on the high side. Some people may find them a little bit on the low side. The steering wheel is a three-spoke model with a fairly thin rim for a modern steering wheel. We have the radar cruise control buttons on this side that is standard in this minivan, and then the infotainment buttons separated on each side. Over in the Odyssey, we have basically the same size moonroof. This model also has ventilated seats for the driver and front passenger. And even though this interior is not quite as modern as the one that we find in the Sienna, I find the general design to be a little bit more pleasing to my eye. The dashboard design is a little bit more similar to Honda's passenger car lineup than we see in the Sienna versus the Toyota passenger car lineup. We have some ambient lighting running right there across that accent strip. All the controls are located in this module in the dashboard because, again, we don't have a center console. The general design theme of the Odyssey is perhaps a little bit more like the rest of Honda's passenger car lineup than the Sienna is versus Toyota's passenger car lineup. In the center console, we have all the vehicle controls because you'll see that it ends right about here. We don't have a continuing bridge over to the cup holders like we find in the other vehicles. Although this is one of Honda's newer infotainment systems, this is probably my least favorite in this trio. It definitely seems to lag a bit when connecting with Apple CarPlay and some of the functions are just not as slick as the new Uconnect 5 system in the Chrysler. The steering wheel is a little bit more thickly rimmed than in the Sienna, but not quite as thick as the one in the Pacifica. We have all the buttons on the front of the steering wheel. So volume up down over here on this side, forward backward this also doubles as the control for that multifunction LCD and then the controls for the heated steering wheel and then the radar adaptive cruise control on the right over in the Pacifica we have the large tri-pane moonroof setup going on height adjustable shoulder belts and you can see that rear seat entertainment system from there Obviously, the styling of red leather is definitely a very personal decision, but I really applaud Chrysler for putting red leather in here because it really makes this interior look different than just black on black on black, like we find in most vehicles in North America. I really love odd colored or off the wall colored leather choices. The interior design of the Pacifica isn't quite like any other product sold by the Chrysler Group in North America, but we do have one of their newest infotainment systems right here in the dash. This is Chrysler's new Uconnect 5 system. This has the highest resolution and largest screen in this bunch and you'll really notice that if you run Apple CarPlay and you put on some of the Google Maps. For some reason, this is also the only minivan in this trio to give us a 360-degree camera, something that's really handy when we're talking about a minivan that is this wide. Now, you'll notice that the cameras for the side view mirrors are located on the side view mirrors, which fold, so if they're folded in, you don't get a true picture of that 360-degree scene. If you're not a terribly good parker, this is also the only one with automated parking, so it'll parallel park or perpendicular park itself. We have a rotary knob shifter over here on the left side, the controls for the tri-zone automatic climate control, some physical buttons for that, and physical buttons for the infotainment system as well. Large storage area right there with two USB inputs. The Blu-ray player is for the rear seats. The steering wheel is a thickly rimmed design. I think this is the most attractive one of the three, but you should know that this metal strip that runs around the steering wheel can get hot or cold depending on the weather. So if you're in Illinois, for instance, in the middle of the winter, you might not want to have this particular steering wheel because that rim will get definitely cold. Now the steering wheel is heated, so obviously that strip will heat up as well. And in the summer, it's also going to be a little bit toasty. We have controls for the infotainment system on the back of the steering wheel rather than on the front. So we have a few more buttons going on here than we find in the other other vehicles. We have a dual moonroof design in here, which is really interesting because the front moonroof is pretty standard sized. The second moonroof is a little bit larger, but they both open. So this is a little bit different than we see in the Pacifica with the large panoramic moonroof and then the third row window. There's no window back there in the ceiling for the third row, but both of these sheets of glass actually open. The upholstery in this model is perforated because the seats are both heated and ventilated. 
As we move over to the front doors and then the dashboard, you'll really start to notice the more crossover like styling in here. The front doors don't have quite as many storage cubbies as we find in some of the minivan competition. The trim on the dashboard changes based on the model that you're in. If you get some of the other trims, then there's an imitation wood trim, very similar to what we see in the Telluride. The top end version of the Carnival definitely wins the award for the most LCD real estate in a minivan at the moment. We have two large 12 inch displays here, a touchscreen one for the infotainment system and a non touchscreen for the instrument cluster. This runs Apple CarPlay or Android Auto your choice. The rest of the software should be pretty familiar if you've been in any modern Kia vehicle in a while. The display does not appear to be quite as high resolution as the system that we find in the refreshed Pacifica, but the screen is definitely larger and more impressive. Below that we find two large air vents, the engine start stop button, the controls for that infotainment system, a row of touch buttons there, which is an interesting touch rather than the physical buttons that we've seen in other Kia products before. I'm not entirely clear how I feel about this design change, but it does give this a slightly cleaner look. Below that, we get the controls for the Tri-Zone Automatic Climate Control System. You can control the rear climate using that button right there. And then we have toggles for the temperature on either side. Below that, we have a USB input for the infotainment system, just one. The others are charge-only ports, Qi wireless charging mat, an area where you can drop your keys or other things like that. We have a pretty traditional console shifter, just where you'd expect it to be in a crossover. And this entire center console definitely is more crossover-like than the other minivans. There's no enormous storage area under the center console. It really just appears to be dead space under there. We have two large cup holders here, but not bunches of juice box holders or anything like that. The steering wheel is almost a four spoke design. We have sort of a split bottom spoke there with enough room for a few fingers to hold right there in the middle. Sport grips up top. We find the infotainment buttons over here on the left along with a voice command button and then phone button. On this side, we find controls for that multifunction LCD instrument cluster and then the radar adaptive cruise control with lane keeping assistance. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure and hit that subscribe button at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of my latest videos. Also be sure and check out the other videos in this minivan series where I take a deep, deep dive into the four best-selling minivans in North America. If you haven't already done so, find me over at facebook.com slash alexnados. There's a merch store at aoamerch.com where you can find some of the items that are on the wall right behind me, and I'll see all of you next week.